Since the invention of the train, it has always been the goal and ambition of many up-and-coming inventors to find ways of making them go faster either by using different wheel layouts, fuels, or body shapes. Another factor is the means of propulsion, with some using powered wheels, some being cable-driven, and the focus of today's video, some that were powered by propeller. By 1914, aviation development was becoming an ever-expanding point of interest for many countries. Aeroplanes were becoming more and more well-known among engineers and inventors, who all studied and meddled with their own designs, trying to find the perfect power-to-weight ratio to achieve that ever-ambitious goal of flight. Meanwhile, others took aspects of aeronautical design and decided to apply them to other means of transport, specifically their engines and propellers. The fact that an engine and a rotating blade could not only move on its own, but also provide enough thrust to lift itself and a person off the ground and maintain a high speed was enough incentive for some to try using a propeller to move a locomotive. The first example of this was built in 1919 by a German man named Otto Steinitz, who essentially bolted a Dringos aircraft engine to the back of a carriage. Despite its initial crude appearance, during testing, it was found to be capable of reaching between 120 to 150 kilometers an hour. Though it could have been considered a success, Success, the design wasn't pursued any further in Germany due to the Treaty of Versailles ban on Germany manufacturing aircraft engines. The next propeller-driven locomotive was built in the early 1920s by a young Russian driver named Valerian Abakovsky. After hearing of Steinitz's propeller-driven carriage, Abakovsky approached the Tambov railway workshop with his idea for a design. The carriage was seen as a way to quickly transport both government officials and sensitive materials, and was given the green light. Soon after, Abakovsky revealed to the world his creation, the Aero Wagon. Though small, its aerodynamic shape and light weight meant it could hit up to 140 kilometers an hour, and by July of 1921, the design was deemed a success. During that July, several foreign delegates were visiting Russia, and it was decided that the Aero Wagon would be the vehicle of choice to take them around the country. After visiting mines, weapons factories, and a theater, at 6.35 p.m., around 111 kilometers outside of Moscow, the Aero Wagon derailed going at 80 kilometers an hour and was blown to smithereens. Six of the 22 people on board died in the accident along with Abakovsky. After the accident, the Aero Wagon was never rebuilt. The official reason for the accident was said to be the poor condition of the track, and the Aero Wagon went too fast over a bump in the rails. However, Abakovsky's son believed rocks were deliberately placed on the rails, and that it was a political act of sabotage in an attempt to kill some of the delegates. A Scottish inventor by the name of George Benny used propellers as the primary means of propulsion for his railplane system. His vision was to build a monorail-style track above existing railways to transport passengers, mail, and perishable goods, while slower moving freight trains and local passenger services could continue to use the railway below. The propeller of the railplane was powered with electricity supplied by the monorail track. A 120 meter stretch of this rail system was built in 1929 at Milngave to demonstrate its potential, but the idea never really took off, and by 1937, Benny went bankrupt and the monorail closed down. It wasn't until 1930, however, that the most famous propeller-driven locomotive was built in Germany by Frank Hans Krukenberg, the Scheinen Zeppelin, or Rail Zeppelin as it was known in English. With a lightweight aluminium body, two conjoined BMW 4 six-cylinder engines, and a streamlined design, the Rail Zeppelin managed to achieve the thrilling speed of 230.2 km an hour, setting the rail speed record which it maintained until 1954. While the design was indeed impressive for its speed, it, along with all the other propeller-driven trains before it, shared many disadvantages, primarily of which was the propeller itself. Because the wheels of the locomotive weren't powered, the engines struggled to climb hills, meaning they could only work properly on relatively level stretches of track. On top of this, driving an engine with propellers meant they were awkward to operate at lower speeds, making shunting them under their own power difficult. For the rail zeppelin, it was extremely difficult to connect any other type of wagon to it, meaning 
meaning it couldn't pull additional carriages should it need to carry more than just 40 passengers at a time. And that's not even mentioning the fact the propellers were completely uncovered and exposed, making them a massive safety hazard to anyone who went near them. The fact nobody was ever caught up in or killed by the propellers of these engines is nothing short of a miracle. Another concern with the rail zeppelin was the risk of it derailing on old or uneven sections of track due to its light weight and high speeds, similar to the aero wagon. Krukenberg's intent was for the German Imperial Railway to adopt the design. However, because of the many flaws the design had, they decided to pursue building their own high-speed rail car, resulting in the flying hamburger. While not as fast as the rail zeppelin, it could still maintain high speeds as well as carry more passengers, climb gradients much easier, and was capable of pulling more carriages if needed. With the flying hamburger being the more reliable of the two, the rail zeppelin was eventually purchased in 1934 by the German Imperial Railway and eventually dismantled for parts in 1939. Overall, propeller-driven rail cars did have some potential, as not only were they fairly fast, but their light weight also meant they were fairly cheap on resources compared to contemporary steam and diesel powered alternatives. However, their incompatibility with other rolling stock, inability to climb hills or safely traverse uneven rails, and the outright danger of having an exposed propeller in the general vicinity of crowded platforms made them much more trouble than they were worth. Perhaps then powering trains using aeroplane propellers was a silly idea. The real solution was to use aeroplane jet engines instead. But that's another idea for another day. Subscribe for more.